If you're just tuning in and you missed our last segment this is being billed as the game that never was on a 41 degree day in Kansas City Missouri. Kansas City Chiefs with their origins in Dallas is the Dallas Texans first year head coach Todd Haley. First head coach in this organization was Hank Stram who ended up in Pro Football's Hall of Fame. His wife Phyllis is here in the stadium today. Former receivers coach with the Dallas Cowboys. And now Wade Phillips. So much has been written but it's a startling statistic a 12 and 1 start in 2007 his first year with the Cowboys 12 and 12 since. Dallas desperately needs a win. You can say the same for the Chiefs as the wind knocks the football off the tee. Chiefs are 0 and 4 and if Dallas were to win here today they would have wins against Tampa Bay Carolina and the Chiefs. None of which have a win so far in 2009. They don't care how it comes as they try and stay within shouting distance of the Giants in the NFC East. Rookie Kevin Ogletree his first NFL game is waiting for the kickoff. Here we go. Going to take it. And a decent return a helmet goes flying a 30 yard return for Ogletree and we look at Tony Romo and so much has been talked about Troy and written about are we seeing a different Tony Romo are they making him too conservative do they have any downfield threat because it seems like they've clipped him a little bit and some of that gunslinger mentality is gone right now well they would deny that they have and I know that he is very aware of not trying to turn the ball over but last week against Denver he threw the ball about as erratically as I have seen missed open receivers down the field as Marion Barber carries it to the 35 picks up seven Corey Mays inside linebacker there to make the stop you look at the number three pick overall in the past draft Tyson Jackson coming off back to back games with no tackles in a secondary that's pretty good. But because there's been virtually no pass rush they get exposed eventually. Well, I think the key today is going to be that defensive front. I have a feeling Dallas is coming into this game really wanting to run the ball even though they still have a banged up Marion Barber and they're without Felix Jones again this week. On second down and three Romo throws and hits his favorite target Witten who's got a first down good for eight. You know I talk about last week with Tony Romo and you know some of the throws that he missed he was as, as erratic as I had seen of him. You know he, one of his real strengths is his accuracy and his ability to put the ball you know on target and that was not the case last week of course the whole offense there in the second half just was completely out of sync. throws and hits Creighton. He drops the football and a scramble for it. The Chiefs say they have it. One of the Kansas City players got on it quickly and now it's Page who comes out of there with it. But they have not ruled the play yet. And they're saying that Creighton was down and keeping it with Dallas. Let's get another look. I think what they're trying to rule Joe is that his forward progress had been stopped and and they had ruled the play dead prior to the ball coming out. Well that is a big break for Dallas because I think you can argue that the forward progress wasn't stopped his feet were still moving the play hadn't ended and now Todd Haley is going to try and challenge but if they blew that play dead and say that his forward progress was stopped it'll be interesting to see if Todd Haley can even challenge it at all. Yeah and I don't believe that he can. The crowd sees it on the video board. They don't like it. And Jason Witten is talking to one of his former coaches. And I think Ron Winter is trying to tell Todd Haley right now that you can't challenge it. Well, that would be a tough break, too, for Kansas City. But it, because it was a nice play there by Flowers as far as, you know, getting Creighton stood up. And 
and then the ball was knocked out. And that's the kind of break really that Kansas City has not had here over the first four weeks of the season. In fact it's gone the other way against them to where they've been the ones turning the ball over. And they get a chance to get good field position here on this first possession but it looks like the ball is going to stay in Dallas's hands. Let's get the call from Ron Winter. Forward progress is rule on the field. Forward progress is not a play that can be reviewed. Second down. Well, I don't agree with the call, and I think Todd Haley will come out of this shaking his head, saying, here we go again. We just had a break go against us. Well, and the good thing is, is that they didn't take a timeout away from Kansas City. You know, there is times when they'll say the coach is responsible for knowing what you can and cannot challenge. Here's Barber trying to pick up a first down. Depends on the spot. So instead of a Creighton catch and fumble, they rule forward progress is stopped, and now Ron Winter immediately signals that it's a first down. So good for two yards and a first down as Barry and Barber as the Cowboys just dodged a bullet here in the opening possession. There's a year for Barber. The Cowboys were coming into Denver having rushed back to back games with over 200 yards on the ground and were shut down with only 74. Yards rushing at Denver against what is now considered one of the better defenses in the NFL. Timeout Dallas. First down when we come back. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Go to Southwest.com. Grab your bag. It's on. Kansas City Chiefs have to be tired of looking at the NFC East. This is week three of four straight against the NFC East. So far 0 and 2. Take on Washington next. Hand off to Barber and he is brought down in the backfield. Ron Edwards the first guy there and a loss of four on the play. Mays cleaned it up. And a good piece of work up front by the Kansas City defense. Well, that's going to be a key for Kansas City throughout this game. Ron Edwards playing over the nose there, and he's able to get penetration in the backfield and get Marion Barber before he got anything going. And, you know, the real key in talking with Todd Haley today is being able to slow down this running game because this is a powerful offensive line, and he believes that if you're able to put the ball into Romo's hands, that they'll have a chance to win this game. Looking for Barber all the way and a penalty flag flies as Barber made the catch was spinning forward. An eligible man downfield number 65 offense. Five yard penalty. Repeat second down. That's Andre Girard and we'll take a game break. Here's Kurt Menefee. Donovan McNabb playing for the first time since week one. How about his first pass since week one today against Tampa Bay. 51 yards in the air to the rookie Jeremy Macklin, his first NFL touchdown, and just like that, the Eagles are on top, 7-0. Back to Joe Troy and Pan. Almost a two-touchdown favorite are the Eagles at home against Tampa Bay. It's second and 19. Fake the handoff, throw to Austin, not much out there, and Austin to midfield, that's it. Third and long coming up as Vrabel makes the tackle, a gain of only six. And again, everything right around the line of scrimmage are short throws by Tony Romo, who so far this season has only one completion that's gone over 20 yards down the field. Well, you come into a game like this after the loss last week against Denver, and there's no doubt that you want to try to hit some high percentage stuff early. You know, Jason Garrett, the offensive coordinator, calling some things to get Romo into some type of groove early in this ballgame. It's third and 13. Quick throw, Austin to the 40, and he's three yards shy of a first down, a gain of 10. And we'll see how the Cowboys want to play it. 
They're definitely outside field goal range, and they are going to play field position and bring on McBriar to punt. Yeah, I think if they were playing against somebody that they thought was more explosive offensively, they may go for it here. Kansas City has had some problems of their own offensively, but a good job defensively there by Kansas City. You know, in being able to stop them. One of the problems this year has been they've gotten behind big time early. A good defensive possession on their part. Fair catch called for and taken in by Bobby Wade after a 31 yard punt. Just outside the eight to shy of the nine is where the Chiefs will start on offense. It is an ever evolving roster with the Kansas City Chiefs. They're going to start at their own nine. First possession for Matt Castle. His numbers from a week ago against the Giants, and they start with a run as they try and establish the run again. Larry Johnson, who's averaged just 2.6 yards per carry, which is a shocking total for Larry Johnson to this point in the season. And the problem when you look at this offense, and for Matt Castle, not so much just what he has on the outside. The problem is here on the offensive line as that's been evolving the first five weeks. It's been evolving and they've been pretty inconsistent through four games. How about a little flea flicker. Castle almost lost the toss now down the middle of the field. The flag is down. Bradley was down. And we'll check the call. It's a hold not a pass interference. It's a hold against Dallas which is a big difference from a pass interference deep down the field. Now they call in the field judge to see if there's another call. Well Todd Haley the head coach is now also the offensive coordinator and he's called something like this early in virtually every ball game. Flea Defense Flicker's got a 41. shot. Five yard penalty and a first down. There's the hold by Newman and before the feet got tangled. Crowd got excited. There's Dave Campo, who's the defensive backs coach for Dallas. It's a 33 yard difference between a defensive hold and a pass interference. And it's a first down for Kansas City at their own 18. Well, Dallas has had a couple of breaks now here in the early going that have dramatically shifted what would have been good field position for Kansas City. How about a reverse? How about a double reverse as Bradley ends up with the ball and Brooking is there to force him out? That didn't work. Last week, as we look at the defense for Dallas, Troy, you talked about how the Chiefs started the game with a couple of Wildcat plays that didn't go anywhere. And they shelved that. And here we have a flea flicker and a double reverse to start the game against this defense for the Dallas Cowboys it comes in ranked 26th in the NFL. Todd Haley's going to page 15 of the playbook here early as Larry Johnson carries it for one. It'll bring up third and long. I think when you look at you know Todd Haley and what he did there you know on those two plays is you know what's the mindset then of a play caller. Well when you try some of those types of plays early in a ball game it's either because you're playing against a defense that's overly aggressive or maybe you feel like you're overmatched and I don't know that Dallas is necessarily an overly aggressive defensive unit so it would lead me to believe that he feels that hey we're going to have to mix it up a little bit here today we cannot go toe to toe against this Dallas defensive front. Third down and 11. Castle spins, throws, gets it complete to his running back Jackie Battle, and a minimal gain as Brady James makes the play. A gain of three, and after the defensive hold, the drive went nowhere for the Chiefs. Yeah, and that was really pretty much what has happened to them throughout the first four games. In that, you know, they were facing third and long. You know, Kansas City is one of the worst offensive teams on first down. And therefore they're constantly looking at third and long and they have not converted very many of those at all. Yeah, they're the worst team in the NFL on third down only nine of 52 less than 17 percent and Creighton knocks it out of bounds for Colquitt a punt of 48 yards Dallas has it second time first quarter in Kansas City no score. 
Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Visa. Visa debit is easier than cash. More people go with Visa. By Ram, the truck that never backs down from a challenge. And by FedEx. We understand your business could use a dick but this pep talk. Good start for the Dallas defense, which certainly has something to prove here today, or at least can't let the Kansas City Chiefs take them apart. Blown a couple of fourth quarter leads so far in the early part of 2009, and now Dallas starts at their own 32. Pressure up the middle. Romo hits Witten. And Witten picks up ten and a half, brought down by Mike Brown, and the leading receiver for the Cowboys has a couple here in the first quarter. So Marion Barber does a nice job of picking up the inside linebacker blitz and and giving Tony Romo a little bit of time. I think that's one of the things that that people don't realize when you talk about Marion Barber, tough runner, as we know, but an excellent blocker and pass protection. Delayed handoff to Barber. Able to hang on to the football, gain six. Tony Romo has started this game five for five. Well, it's a good start for Tony. I mean, a guy who was uh, heavily scrutinized at the end of that game last week against Denver and, you know, going after Champ Bailey. Personally, I think it was a good decision based on the pre snap look, and uh, they just didn't execute. But had he have looked the other way last week, Miles Austin. Ran a couple of nice routes that probably would have gone for a pretty easy touchdown. Second down and four for Dallas. Hand off to Barber and he slips and falls at midfield. Let's go back to last week, fourth quarter at Denver. Yeah, here's the third down play and trying to fit it into Sam Hurd against Champ Bailey. But on the other side, Miles Austin, you see the separation that he's able to get. And it was very similar on fourth down. Now, as a quarterback on these quick throws, you've got to make a decision prior to the ball being thrown as to which side of the field you're going to work. He elected to go to Sam Hurd because of the fact Champ Bailey was playing off. But had he have gone the other way, then probably more than likely that would have been a touchdown. Before we have a third down and three, one of the officials is hurt checking the leg. And it's that right leg of the umpire right in the middle of the action. We'll take a break and get his status when we come back. Bill Schuster is the umpire. He's now over on the trainer's table on the Chiefs sideline. Getting looked at walked off under his own power but we're now playing without an umpire right in the middle of that defense it's third and three for Dallas. Play action from Romo and he hits Creighton for a first down. We can talk about the catch of Creighton but I want to ask you I know it's a different world Troy than when you started with the Dallas Cowboys. Back in 1989, could you a imagine what Tony Romo's been through in the short time he's been quarterback of the Cowboys, or b appropriately describe the kind of pressure that he's under here today and really all season for Dallas? Well, he's going at it alone. I mean, no one else on that team understands the pressure that he's under. And you know, I say that Romo is probably the most polarizing and scrutinized figure in all of football at this time. First down for Dallas choice for the first time lowers his head keeps on going. Corey Mays on the stop will step aside game break. Here's Kurt. Well the Cowboys may be up and down but the Giants just keep on rolling the pitch from Eli Manning to Ahmad Bradshaw. Bradshaw second touchdown of this game already against Oakland and it's 14 nothing Giants in the first quarter. Joe. All right, Kurt, thanks. Yeah, you know, I tell you, I know that was Ahmad Bradshaw, but Eli Manning is playing about as good a football as I have seen from him. He has been outstanding. Was very good last week against his Chiefs team. Looked like a false start on the right side, either Colombo or Davis. False start. Offense number 75. Five yard penalty. It remains second down. Yeah, I would agree with you. He got the big deal over the offseason. Everybody's talking, talking about Eli Manning, about 
You know, heck, he's making more than his brother with the Indianapolis Colts. He's won a Super Bowl, and he's come out of the gate firing, playing now with plantar fasciitis in his right foot. Well, and I, you know, they talk here in Dallas about what a better locker room it is for Tony Romo and, and what have you. I, I think it's like that in New York as well. I mean, without a Plexico Burris, all of a sudden we're seeing Eli Manning exert his leadership a little bit more. Romo has to spend another timeout. Second down and 10 when we come back for the Cowboys. No score. Wade Phillips on your left, Todd Haley on your right. We talked about how the umpire Bill Schuster left. What they do is bring the field judge from the back. He's in the middle now of that defense. It's Jim Howie. Second down and 10 for Dallas. Romo throws and hits Creighton in stride. Good throw, good catch, and a first down for Dallas at the 23 of Kansas City. 18 yards before Donald Washington made the stop for the Chiefs. Well, Romo off to a hot start, hasn't had an incompletion yet. Good route on the outside by Patrick Creighton, and then Romo, unlike last week, he delivers this one right on target. You're, you're able to see that Patrick Creighton, who has exceptional hands, is able to pluck that one out of the air and still stay on the move and get some more yards. Much better start to this game for Creighton than his last couple. On first down, hand off to Barber, cuts it back. Penalty flag on the play. Page is there to make the stop for Kansas City, but a flag is down. And it looks like it's coming back. And it is. It's a hold against Dallas. And I tell you, Joe, even holding offense number 63, 10-yard penalty. Repeat first down. You know, even watching Marion Barber there, he was limited last week against Denver. He still, you know, looks like he's laboring pretty good. They didn't feel like he had re-injured the quad muscle anymore, or was any worse off coming out of that game and getting ready for this week. But once he breaks his tackle here from Mike Brown, you know, he's not running like we're used to seeing him run when he is healthy. And what happened last week is that there at halftime, it tightened up on him. And it'll be interesting to see if it tightens up on him at halftime here in this game. Umpire Bill Schuster back. The officials rotation right in the middle of the action on first and 20. Romo throws, hits Witten, taking apart this Kansas City secondary, and Witten brought down by Brown after a gain of 11. You know, this is where Witten's pretty good. This is zone coverage, and you would think that even if you're in zone coverage, you'd have a pretty good idea as to where Jason Witten is. Mike Vrabel is the one who's there to make the tackle after he makes the catch, but you know, Jason Witten gets down the field, and then he finds the open hole in his zone. Hard to play zone against Jason Witten because he's so good at knowing what Tony Romo is expecting and being where he's supposed to be. Witten had only one catch in the first half last week at Denver. That's his third catch. Romo. Austin. A juggle and incomplete. Austin was open behind Washington with the throw a little too much from Tony Romo. And Miles Austin is the guy that really gives them a little bit of a big play ability because of his speed is almost able to haul that one in. But he's a guy that they need to get going. When they came into this season and they were without Terrell Owens, they really didn't have anybody with big time speed to threaten the defense. Miles Austin has that speed, but they've been unable to really take advantage of it. Making his first NFL start here today in place of the injured Roy Williams out with bad ribs. Third and nine, a blitz from Kansas City. Romo dumps it off behind Choice incomplete. And it's fourth down. So the Kansas City defense let the Cowboys march the ball down the field. A big hold on a run by Barber. And instead of first and goal from the seven, 
it moved the ball back and the Cowboys could never get it that close again. Well, I think you got to give Kansas City some credit defensively for the job that they did in, in holding them here to a field goal attempt but but that is going to add to some of the frustrations for Dallas. I mean even when they have moved the ball here in recent weeks they've not been able to come away with touchdowns when they've gotten the ball down in this area of the field. 40 yard try and it is no good. And more of the same for the Dallas Cowboys. Romo's hot this week, a good start, but he couldn't care less. It's still score scoreless in Kansas City. Volk had made 19 of his last 20. LP Laducer is the long snapper. Matt McBriar, the holder, never did turn the football. And get the laces away from the instep of the kicker, Nick Folk. Yeah, and you don't know what the impact of that was, but yet you know that it, it affects them to some degree as a kicker when you go up there to kick it and the laces haven't been turned. This is one of the few big play threats for Kansas City. Jamal Charles gains six, and we go down to the field and Pam Oliver. Hey there, Joe. Offensively, Jason Witten had an idea. He said, we don't need to focus on the big picture. We need to take it one possession at a time. By all accounts, the Cowboys had a great week of practice. Good teams don't do some of the bonehead things we've been doing, Witten said. He said he is confident, though, that they could clean everything up, although three offensive penalties so far. Yeah, that has hurt him. A big hold against Kozier. Castle pulls it back down and ends up on the ground. Olshansky was in there for Dallas. No gain on the play, maybe half a yard. It won't go as a stat as a sack. And let's see why he pulled it back. Well, he's looking for somebody down the field, and he just couldn't find anybody open. The offensive line actually does a pretty good job inside. Looked like he was trying to go to Wade there in the middle and. You know, Matt Castle has taken a lot of sacks. He was sacked a lot last year in New England. He's been sacked a lot here already in the early going for Kansas City. You know, he's got to be able to get outside of the pocket and unload some of those throws. They say that it is a sack for no yards, and here's a pass broken up for Bradley, and Newman made the play for Dallas. So it is another sack, and you're right, Troy, as you look at very emotional head coach Todd Haley who's not happy with his group coming off the field Matt Castle is the most sacked quarterback over the last two seasons. Well and you know that you know when you're sacked 47 times yeah that's an indictment to a certain extent on the offensive line but it also is on a quarterback you know knowing that he's not getting rid of the football and I know that on that last play he had nowhere to really throw it because of the coverage. Colquitt hits it and it's dropped by Creighton. A fight for the ball and Kansas City has it. Leggett comes out of there with a football and after nearly turning it over earlier in this first quarter Creighton finally does in a muffed punt. Well and I said it a moment ago Patrick Creighton has exceptional hands. That's one of the reasons why he's back there returning kicks. But he's had a couple of balls on the ground now here in the first half and and this one was was a big turnover for Dallas given the Kansas City Chiefs who really have done nothing offensively outstanding field position with 13 seconds left in the first quarter. Hand off to Larry Johnson who's dragged down and a good play by Ratliff. Playing with a bad back, and that's the way the first quarter will come to an end. A loss of six. Patrick Creighton has had a rough first quarter, and here is a muff punt, giving the Chiefs an early opportunity. No score. The NFL on Fox will continue after this from your local Fox station. Because of a muffed punt. By Patrick Creighton, the Kansas City Chiefs, who have run eight offensive plays, have seven yards, one first down by penalty, have it inside the Dallas 30. Handed to Johnson again, there's nothing there. Brady James made the play, but he wasn't alone. A gain of only one, and third and long coming up. 
for again the team that is last in the NFL at third down conversions and this is a big reason why as you said third and 15 third and long and I know Todd Haley wanted to use some of the frustration Dallas came into this game with against them but you get great field position you got to do something offensively with it. No huddle by the Chiefs. Third and 15. Castle throws high and it's incomplete. And this Chiefs offense is going nowhere. Pressure by Spencer, who the Cowboys believe is getting closer and closer to making a difference in that Dallas defense. And now a 46 yard try is coming from Ryan Suckup, the rookie kicker for the Chiefs. Well this Dallas defense was was very bad in weeks one and two they've come back the last two weeks and have done a nice job and the early going here you know this was a good possession for them defensively holding Kansas City the way they did. Long field goal try on a windy day and suck up hits and the Chiefs have the lead because of a muff punt by Creighton. 3 nothing Kansas City as you look at Patrick Creighton's response on the bench. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by State Farm. To us, nothing's more important than being there. By Frost Brewed Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. And by the all-new Taurus from Ford. Drive one. Offensive line has a lot to talk about on the Kansas City sideline. Kevin Ogletree, his first game active, college free agent out of Virginia. Rookie waiting for it. 3 0 Chiefs. From about the two. Ogletree can't make the 20 and a good play downfield by Terrence Copper a former Cowboy. We look ahead to the Major League Baseball playoffs coming up on Fox as we give you an inside peek at the Negro League Baseball Museum founded in 1990 moved to its present site in 1997. See the bronze statues of Satchel Paige Josh Gibson. 75 seat theater with ballpark bleachers and when I see that it makes me think of the late and great Buck O'Neill and congratulations to Joe Torrey and the L.A. Dodgers on a nice series there against Cardinals and you look at what the Red Sox are doing today against the Angels leading 5 1 as they try and stave off elimination in a sweep the Angels won the first two games out west the shark choice picks up four on first down Corey Mays on the tackle for the Chiefs. You know we talked about it coming in Joe about Kansas City not being able to afford to get behind early two weeks ago against Philadelphia they were down 17 at halftime last week against the Giants they're down 14. You know the fact they come into this game haven't done anything offensively still you know here today but yet they're able to stick to what they want to do up three nothing. A late snap ball is loose picked up by Mike Brown. The ball never came up from Andre Girard and then Leonard Davis may have knocked it out of the hands of Tony Romo. Yeah late snap you got Leonard Davis who's pulling and that's spells trouble for Dallas offensively and they put the ball on the ground again. You know, Mike Brown just right there and the ball comes right to him. I mean offensively we said Kansas City hasn't done anything but yet they've got a three nothing lead. The defense gets another turnover for him. Delayed handoff to Larry Johnson. Picks up three the two time pro bowler. So now here's another turnover by the Dallas offense. They turned it over inside their own 20 last week at Denver really hurt him in the first half and now they do it here in the opening moments of the second quarter in Kansas City Yeah, and Kansas City is actually very good once they do get into the red zone the problem is that they rarely have gotten into the red zone but they're actually tied for first scoring touchdowns once they get in here it's their 10th time in 
First nine times they've scored six touchdowns. Here's Johnson. Nice throw by Castle. And Larry Johnson forced out, setting up first and goal inside the five. That was an excellent throw by Matt Castle. Navigating the defender, laying it softly, and putting enough air on it so that Larry Johnson could then get underneath that. A pretty good catch on his part as well. Right now, Todd Haley's trying a lot of different things. They've run the ball inside. They've tried running it outside without much success. They've run the reverses. We're seeing now you know, the screen pass to the outside, trying to get something going. First and goal, and Larry Johnson takes it down just inside the two, picked up a couple, second and goal. But to go back to Dallas, here's a team two and two coming in, taking on the winless Kansas City Chiefs. A team completely in transition. Cowboys look like they can move the ball, and yet they've turned it over a couple of times, and they're in danger of falling behind 10-0. Well, there's two things at work here. We saw Tony Romo. He's obviously thinking about a lot of things, lack of execution, the struggles they're having offensively, whereas Kansas City now starting to get a little confidence. Grable is in as an eligible receiver, and Larry Johnson fighting his way and won't get in. Picked up half a yard, maybe. With that carry, Larry Johnson just broke the record, formerly held by Priest Holmes, who was honored before today's game for the most carries in Kansas City Chiefs history. Well, if he gets another one, he, he needs to run a little harder than what we've seen so far. On that last run, I mean, when you get down in this area, you got to put your head down and, and, and run. And it just doesn't look like, like he's running with the authority that I've seen from him before. Watch out for number 50, Vrabel. There's Vrabel. Touchdown, Kansas City. Seen Mike Rabel do this a lot when he was with the New England Patriots, and you know he's a big target down here. We were at practice on Friday, Joe. We saw him working on some of those routes earlier today in pregame warmups. He was running wide receiver routes. In fact, Todd Haley said he's better than any tight end we have on our on our squad. We're used to seeing Rabel do it with the New England Patriots. He has 11 catches. In his NFL career, all 11 for touchdowns. Vrabel is in 10 0 Kansas City. What does greatness taste like? Here's a snap. Snap open a Miller Lite. The ball is down. It's on the way. You're on your way to a rich golden color, real beer aroma, and a true Pilsner taste. There's light beer, and then there's triple hop brew Miller Light. Taste greatness. The stadium is wild! Mike Vrabel, starting linebacker, is in for the touchdown catch. Really no big shock anymore that Vrabel, who did it time and time again, did it in Super Bowls with the New England Patriots. Gets the touchdown, and so now it's 10 0. And Ogletree takes it for the Cowboys. And he basically takes a seat after getting across the 20. And so now we welcome you inside our broadcast booth as Troy and I are huddled up trying to stay warm. Pam is down on the field. And, you know, we've talked about it already, but it's no small thing here in Kansas City. They've got life here. The Chiefs are up 10 nothing and this crowd if they start to smell a victory they can get awfully loud in here. Well that's what they wanted to do because as I said they have gotten behind early in some games. Now they got a 10 point lead and you know this is a big possession right now for Dallas offensively even though they have moved the ball. Kansas City started to gain a lot of confidence. Here's Barber had a hand on a maze in the backfield and Marion Barber has a first down as he gets 11 and says give it to me. Well, they're just going to run right at him here. You know, Corey Mays comes untouched and is just unable to make the play on Barber. And, you know, that's where he is exceptional. You know, not a lot of times first guy in the hole is able to bring Marion Barber to the ground. You know, Emmett Smith was a lot like that back when he played. 
you know, Emmett probably with a lot more quickness and speed than what Marion Barber has. There's Mays. He's in on just about every play. Barber carries it for three. Here's a game break. Here's Kurt Metafee. Two Ahmad Bradshaw rushing touchdowns in the first quarter. A pair of Eli Manning throwing touchdowns in the second. Giants on top of the Raiders, 28 to nothing. They're outgaining them 262 yards to 18. And there's still 10 minutes to go before halftime, Joe Troy and Pam. And you look at the NFC East, Kurt, a 4-0 record for the Giants. And can pretty much mark that one down as they take on the hapless Oakland Raiders. Philly 2-1. Two These Cowboys 2-2. Two two. Same for the Washington Redskins and Colombo. Is slow to recover after blocking on that run by Barber and will get the call on the penalty. Illegal formation. Offense. Number 19. Covered to tight end. Five yard penalty. Repeat first down. I mean, Troy, it's penalties and illegal formation, it's turnovers. This is another sloppy effort so far by the Dallas Cowboys. Well, I will tell you that good offensive football and bad offensive football, the difference is not that much. And when things start going south for you, everything becomes a struggle. Now, the penalties are inexcusable. You shouldn't be able to get lined up. But the execution part of it, that's what becomes the problem. And somehow, Dallas has to be able to try to regain the confidence that they've lacked. And now we've got another false start by Flozell Adams. False start. Offense number 76. Five-yard penalty. It remains first down. Well, this looks really bad for the Dallas Cowboys. That six penalties, five on the offense. And there's still 9.53 left in the first half. They're just going backwards here on this possession. We saw Mark Colombo, who was banged up. I tell you, he's about as tough as they come. You know, here in the NFL, a guy who almost got out of football before his career even got underway with the knee injuries that he has had. But he is still in the lineup. So first and 20, trying to set up a screen, and there's nothing there. Hali was there defending for Kansas City, and by that time, Dorsey had pressure on Romo at second and 20. Well, I'll tell you what, in you know, watching this possession right now, if Dallas is unable to do anything here, and it's going to be hard to convert this on second down and be able to pick up a first down, you know, it's backed up as what they are at second and 20. But if Kansas City is able to hold them and they give the ball back to their offense with some decent field position, I mean, that that's going to go a long way here in this second quarter. Because Dallas, as you can tell, is playing with a lot of frustration right now. Second and 20, and now this Chiefs defense has some jump to it. Pass is tipped. Incomplete for Miles Austin. You know, at the last minute, you got Tony Romo who feels the blitz from Brandon Flowers, who comes a little bit late, you know, with the blitz, but he gets there, and Tony, you're gonna see him flinch just at the last minute. He kind of catches it out of the corner of his eye. That's the second time now that we've seen Flowers come in on the blitz. Romo started eight for eight. Now thrown four straight incompletions. Third and 20. Holly with pressure. Romo gets out of it. And will slide down shy of the 30. It's fourth down. A run of six yards by Romo. Yeah, and this time you're going to see they only rush three guys right here. And Tom Bahali, number 91, the right defensive end, he's the one who gets the pressure. He goes right by Flozell Adams. And a three man rush, you can see the havoc that was created in the pocket. You know, typically you rush three guys against Tony Romo. He's going to sit back there and find somebody that's open. It's a good job defensively by Kansas City. Good punt by McBriar. And a fair catch or no fair catch called. Kind of a slow motion play. Wade made the catch. Tackled by ball. Nothing on the return. A 52-yard punt.
go by the numbers the Chiefs have run 15 plays gained 24 yards on offense and they're up 10 to nothing. You look at two different stories in the first half the start for Tony Romo and the 0 for 4 since an 8 and 8 beginning. And the Chiefs have it inside their own 20 at their 19 up by 10. They roll Castle to his right and the throw is over everything in the direction of Bobby Wade. Terrence Newman was out there for Dallas and that pass was 10 yards over their heads. Well obviously it's early in the game here with still over eight minutes left in the second quarter but the longer this game goes without Dallas doing something offensively you know, clearly the more frustrated they're going to get and the more pressure that they're going to experience. I don't think anybody's panicking right now you know on that Dallas sidelines but there's no question they did not expect this. Castle sets up over the middle hits the guy who's been his favorite target so far his big tight end Sean Ryan good for 13 yards in a first down and this time the offensive line does a good job for Matt Castle off of play action and he's able to deliver a good ball here to Sean Ryan and you know, Sean Ryan a guy who's been with six NFL teams and only had 12 career receptions coming into this year as you said Joe I mean he, he's been he's been the primary target 12 catches in five years before this season he's got 12 catches this year for over 100 yards and came in as a leading receiver for the Chiefs Larry Johnson just with a run back to the line of scrimmage typically you think Chiefs tight end Tony Gonzalez you're kind of used to it one of the best players in the history of that position they trade him away and now Sean Ryan has stepped into that void. And I, you know obviously they lost a lot of production when they lost Gonzalez but a trade that long term will probably be good for them. Wide open receiver is Bo and Dwayne Bo picks up 20 yards. Brandon Albert the second year left tackle one on one here against Demarcus Ware and he does a good job. And Matt Castle this is a good throw on his part square in over the middle Dwayne Bow, a big target. But I know Demarcus Ware is playing frustrated as well. I mean a guy who now has gone five games going back to last year without a sack the longest drought that he has had since his rookie year. And he hasn't gotten close yet here today. And we've seen a lot of tackles the first few weeks handle him one on one. Uh -oh. Castle backpedaling. Brooking brings him down. And a big sack by Keith Brooking, the five time Pro Bowler, a loss of eight. Keith Brooking coming off a great game last week against Denver. You can see him right here in the middle. And these linebackers, whether it's Keith Brooking or Brady James, they do a great job of kind of sitting in behind that defensive front and knowing when to hit the hole. And that was a three step drop, quick pass. You know, Todd Haley wanted to call something that gets the ball out, and, and again, it's not there, but Matt Castle hangs on to it. It's all the conversation on the Dallas defense and the pass is off the arm of Dwayne Bow incomplete. A couple of things have happened for the Cowboys. First, the 52 yard punt by McGuire, which got Dallas out of trouble field position wise. And now the sack by Brooking as Mike Jenkins comes off the field. He's banged up. It's third and 18 for Kansas City. has been hit plenty already. Just a three man rush for Dallas. Castle steps out of it. He's past the line of scrimmage and now he's out of bounds at the 45 well short of a first down. Scandrick forced him out. That play led Castle right into his head coach Todd Haley who wants to talk about that last series and it was a sack on first down that derailed that series for him and Kansas City fourth in the NFL in negative plays not counting penalties 
Fair catch by Creighton who slides as he hauls it in. He's already had a rough first half. 32 yard punt. Cowboys get it back. Down by 10. Todd Haley's team, the Chiefs, coming into today had led in a game for less than 19 minutes all year. They lead 10 to nothing here, five and a half to play in the first half. And for the Cowboys, their last two drives, six plays, nine yards with a fumble and a punt. Romo has to jump to complete it to Witten, who waits for a block. And now is out of bounds. They're going to mark him short of the first down. Now a rather generous spot of the football, and we may get a measurement. They're going to say first down. First down, Dallas. We look ahead to next week. The Giants and the Saints, Rams, Jaguars, or Lions and Packers. The Ford Drive One Fox NFL Sunday pregame show begins at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific, as Marion Barber on first down carries it for two. Remember, Dallas has only one timeout remaining in this first half. You know, Kansas City, when you look at them defensively and where they're ranked in the league, and you know, not real good, but then when you look at who they have faced and had to play against, you know, the various offenses, Baltimore number three, and then Philadelphia and New York, you know, both in the top 10. And so they don't get a break here against Dallas either, even as even as well as they have played here in this first half. It's second down and eight. Romo throws for Austin. Good throw. And a good run after the catch by Miles Austin. 19 yard catch and run. Tom Bahali, he's one of the guys who can you know, really create some havoc for this defensive unit. He, he got there just a little bit late, but I know he was a real concern for Dallas offensively coming into this game. In fact, in talking with offensive line coach Hudson Howe, he said Tom Bahali is the best pass rusher that we will have faced up to this point in the season. That's saying something considering the game that Elvis Doomerville had last week against them from Denver. Romo, Austin. Stays in bounds, gets a block down the sideline and down inside. They're going to mark him out at the 20. Demario Williams on the stop and a 37 yard catch and run between Romo and Miles Austin. An excellent throw here. It's what they call the seven route. It's just basically a, a rounded off corner route, but Romo lays it out on the sideline perfectly. And Austin doing a good job of getting extra yards up the sideline. Here's Barber. Now the Cowboys are inside the red zone. And as you mentioned, Troy, last two games have taken seven trips inside the opposition's red zone, two touchdowns. That's it. Two field goals, and three times they didn't score. Including last week at Denver in the early part of the second half, and that cost them. And it's hard. I mean, it is really hard when you get down here and when you start struggling offensively and starting to question, you know, how you're playing, it becomes that much more difficult to score touchdowns, let alone moving the football. Second and eight. Romo throws, and he and Creighton on different pages. Go back to that. Big play to Miles Austin. Now you're going to see Keith Brooking on the sideline here as a defensive player who's into the ball game and watching what's happening. There he is, number 51. And you know Keith Brooking has been a great addition to this ball club, and, it, and it's unusual for someone to come into an organization and make such an immediate impact. Not so much on the field, but then in the locker room and to a man. And also, every one of these coaches talks about his leadership. And what he has meant as a locker room guy. Third down and eight. Chiefs bringing the blitz, and that's Hurd making the catch, and he's wrestled down inside the 10 with a first down for Dallas. Romo has made some very good throws on this drive for the Cowboys. Well, this was pretty easy, and this is what you want as a quarterback. You've got the blitz, but Hurd's going to run the slant against Leggett. And look how soft Leggett is in coverage. I mean, he's off, given the slant. 
And this is what Dallas was hoping to get last week against Champ Bailey. But they bring the blitz. Leggett's soft at the corner position. Pretty easy throw there for Tony Romo. First and goal. Hand off to Barber. Down to the four, picked up four, and as we approach the two-minute warning, we can show Brooking on the sideline. We talk about what he's done off the field and in the locker room. A big Keith Brooking sack the last time the Chiefs had the ball. Changed the momentum. The Cowboys trying to get their first points. We're at the two-minute warning in Kansas City. Look at the 202 yards of Offense the Cowboys have put up no points down 10 nothing two minutes left first half second and goal That's Bennett This one is lofted for Austin And incomplete as he dropped the football had it it looked like for a moment Carr out there defending and it's third and goal. Yeah, Brandon Carr never gets turned around. He didn't even know the ball was in the air. And Miles Austin, a well thrown ball and should have been an easy completion. But when he caught it, you saw Brandon Carr get his hand in there just at the last minute and knock it loose. But that, that was a good throw by Tony Romo recognizing the coverage there by Brandon Carr and that he wasn't going to be turning around looking to make a play. Pass is through the hands of Hurd incomplete. And that's two opportunities for the Cowboys. Austin couldn't hang on, and Hurd had to go right through his hands. Yeah, and Romo was wanting to do the Tom Brady here. Last week, Ron Winter was the referee, and he got the call, and you see the helmet to helmet hit. And in all honesty, that should have been a penalty. You cannot come in at the quarterback helmet to helmet. And Tony Romo was right in wanting that call. There was that was more to the letter of the rule as opposed to the hit last week that Tom Brady got. 22 yard try, a chip shot for Folk, who had missed once already. It's a 10 3 game. For the first time in his career, Tony Romo has gone back to back games without throwing a touchdown pass. There's the play. You see the hit on the front end of it, and then Hurd just missed it right through his hands well, on the back end of it. Well, I don't know how Ron Winter misses that. I mean, John McGraw, 47, not only was it helmet to helmet, but he lowered his head. He came in with the crown of his helmet. I mean, that's, that's a pretty easy call, especially when, when that's all the referee does. I mean, once the ball snapped, he's watching the quarterback, and there's, there's no excuse for missing that one. Well, meanwhile, it was Ron Winter, the referee, who was in that game that you talked about, where Brady had a couple of calls go for him and for the Patriots. Big calls in their win over the Baltimore Ravens. This time he doesn't make the call, and I think much to the surprise of Tony Romo with the way that they're calling hits on quarterbacks these days in the NFL. See Tim Crumry there. The defensive line coach for Kansas City, the heck of a player in his day. And you know, this defensive front for Kansas City, fortunate to have a guy of his stature coaching them up. Baylor kicks it away. On the return, it's Charles. And he can't make it to the 15 yard line. Well covered downfield by Dallas we go back to December 23rd 1962 this is a throwback day there's Jack Buck at midfield for the overtime coin flip the second overtime it's the Dallas Texans beating the Houston Oilers and there's the start of a great relationship between Jack Buck and the Hall of Famer Hank Stram who was a victorious coach in 1962. And interestingly enough the Dallas Texans after they won that championship that's when they relocated here to Kansas City and they were the better team in Dallas at that time and you know, that's the that's Lamar Hunt doing what he had to do for the AFL and to allow them to survive. Here's a pass to Charles out of the backfield and he is out of bounds. Gain nine, Brooking on the stop. 
Coming up on the Visa halftime report, Kurt, Terry, Howie, Michael, and Jimmy. Well, the scores and highlights from around the league and the Fox Sports ticker will keep you updated with up to the second stats. Second down and one. Cowboys have only one timeout in case you're wondering about that defensively. Well, you tell Kansas City they're, they're being very cautious in how they're approaching this this possession right now. They want to see if they can give themselves a chance to make a play and maybe get some points but they don't want to get too aggressive here. Low snap and a handoff to Charles and he's brought down immediately at the 20. And the clock continues to run a loss of one third down and a couple coming up and I would think right now that they're going to take their time getting this play run they I expected them to huddle up you know, if they don't convert here on third down they will now they'll call a timeout but I think at this point Todd Haley would be very pleased going in 10 to 3 at halftime on the other side if Dallas gets a stop here on third and two. They'll use their last time out, try to get the ball back and make something happen. It has been certainly a half of missed opportunities and frustration for the Dallas Cowboys. First, the 40 yarder missed by Fulk. So it remains scoreless. Creighton with a muff punt. His frustration. A fumble by Romo as he didn't get the snap in time recovered by Kansas City and then certainly an opportunity to get a touchdown instead of a field goal Austin can't hang on as Carr knocked it away and then Hurd had to go right through his hands and no call as McGraw went helmet to helmet on quarterback Tony Romo third and two. Castle is going to step up, pick up the first down, and slide for the first down at his own 31. That was a good job there by Matt Castle of nothing open down the field. He sees the lane, he knows what he has to do in order to pick up the first down, then getting down immediately and regrouping. Four man rush underneath it's Charles. Cuts back, has another first down, and now Kansas City. We'll think about getting some more points before the half as they take a timeout. Weekdays make lunchtime your new prime time as FoxSports.com brings you lunch with benefits. Log on to check out new episodes of original sports shows delivered to your desktop every Monday through Friday at 1 Eastern. Tomorrow, don't miss the after party with Jake Glazer. He chats with all of today's biggest performers only on FoxSports.com on MSN. And then I get to make my cube debut with the great, and I mean great, Chris Peasy on Peasy's Slice of Peasy. Slice of Peasy with Joe Buck. That's Thursday, and I'm just reading the card. It's at 1 Eastern on FoxSports.com, and it says Peasy is looking to book Troy Aikman as a yeah. guest sometime well, soon. When's that going to be on? Thursday at 1. I'll put it in my your to do list. Day planner. Please do. <laughs> First down for Kansas City, up by seven. One timeout left for the Chiefs. Scandrick missed on a blitz, gets another chance. A hand to the face, no flag, and Castle throws it away. <laughs> Scandrick and James with pressure, and now 30 seconds left. I mean, Castle's back there kind of fighting for his life, but, you know, he. Through four games now, four and a half games. This is kind of what he has experienced each and every week. And I mean, you got to go. You, you got to go and, and get it out. And you know, the sack right now is is a real killer. It's a killer for any team. It is it is death. You know, for the Kansas City Chiefs because they just can't overcome that. Second and ten. Pressure. Ware can't bring down Castle. Penalty flag on the play. Castle floats it for Ryan, the tight end. It's a first down at the 41, but a flag is down. It looks like a hold against the Chiefs. Holding. Offense number 54. A 10 yard penalty. Repeat second down. That's the veteran 10 year pro, Brian Waters. 
And that's Brian Waters who actually began his career. You see him here the left guard began his career with the Dallas Cowboys and a guy who's been to several Pro Bowls. And it's when the scrambling started to take place is when he got a hold of the jersey. And Demarcus Ware goes right around Brandon Albert that time. And the frustration for Ware has to be building, as you said earlier. He is without a sack. He had 20 last year for the Cowboys, who led the NFL with 59. They're on a pace for 24 this season. Second and 20. Castle throws. Sideline. That's Bradley. And now 13 seconds remain. And it'll be third down at the Kansas City 48. That completion good for 14 yards. Suck up this year his season long and career long 54 yards, which means. Getting to the 36 yard line of Dallas. Well, you got to be careful if you're Dallas because you don't want to give up a big play for a touchdown. You don't want to run, to run by you, but yet you don't want another play like what we just saw and giving them a lot of yards. Castle throws, gets drilled, the pass incomplete for Bradley. Brooking with more pressure, and Brooking, the last time the Chiefs had the ball, had his first sack since November of 2007, and he almost got another. And on fourth down, the Chiefs will punt. Castle shaken up a bit as he got hit by Brooking. Patrick Creighton again waiting for it. Timeout, Dallas. And Dallas has to use a timeout. Not that it's a big deal. But just bringing their punt return team onto the field, they have to use a timeout. Not that they're going to do anything with the ball here. Because if Creighton does anything big, enough time will come off the clock where the half would be over. No, but, but you're right. I mean, it's indicative of the bigger problem, and that is that they just have made too many mistakes, whether it's with penalties, turnovers. That's why they're down right now 10 to 3. But there's got to be more attention to some of those types of things you know not getting the right people out on the field not getting lined up. You know those are the things that at, at this level you just shouldn't have. Colquitt. Good snap. Colquitt. It's one down that will check up inside the five. Just outside the three, and that's the end of the first half. And it's the Kansas City Chiefs, due in large part to a lot of Dallas Cowboy mistakes, with a seven-point halftime lead. Yeah, and this is a this is new territory right now, at least in recent weeks, for Kansas City to be going in at halftime with a lead. They've got to be feeling pretty good about what happened here throughout the first 30 minutes. Dallas, on the other hand, with the turnovers, not getting in the end zone in the red zone. You know that frustration is still there the frustration that they came into this ball game with Cowboys have 202 yards of offense they've missed a field goal have a total of three points and trail by seven at the half 10 three Chiefs stay tuned the NFL on Fox will continue after a word from your local Fox station. of magical tape going into the way back machine as we play a throwback type game here in the NFL it's the Dallas Cowboys taking on the Kansas City Chiefs the Chiefs wearing the helmets of the Dallas Texans two franchises that started back in 1960 both competed for fans and players off the field 
And back in those days, the AFL's Texans were better than the NFL's Cowboys, so they never did play because the Cowboys had nothing to gain. Here is Charles on the return. So because they never played, here we are playing in 2009. We go down to the field and check in with Pam Oliver. Hey there, Joe. Things got a little ugly on that Cowboys sideline before the team headed in. I heard players use words like joke and embarrassing. My conversation with Wade Phillips was very brief. He says we'll keep playing and hopefully we'll get over those creating all those penalties for ourselves. Meantime, it's going to be a long week for Dallas, Joe, as you know, if things don't go well here today. Back to you. Yeah, a long week, Pam, because they're headed into their bye week. So they'll have extra time to chew on whatever happens here in Kansas City over the middle. That's Ryan the tight end and a good start to this second half for Kansas City a 14 yard completion from Matt Castle. Yeah, I think if you look at Kansas City you know through the first four and a half ball games and what they've done or what they've not done. You know they haven't gotten much production. They haven't gotten much production run the football but they haven't gotten anything out of their passing game. The only game in which they've done anything was week two against Oakland. Every other game they've had less than 200 yards of offense and there in the first half didn't move it really all that well certainly the turnovers by Dallas being the difference pressure and the pass is incomplete big time pressure from Anthony Spencer and I thought it was interesting that when we talked to Matt Castle who's slow to get up the first guy he mentioned on the Dallas defense was Anthony Spencer who doesn't have a sack and missed a clear cut interception last week. Yeah I was a little surprised by that one myself. I think I would have been talking more about DeMarcus Ware even though he doesn't have a sack either. Anthony Spencer has been Dallas. This is his year to show what he can do and he's been up and down. Castle's been hit 12 times in this game already and there it is sack number one. DeMarcus Ware. It took him until the fifth game, but after having 20 last year, a franchise record, Ware gets his first here this afternoon. Well, DeMarcus Ware this time is going to use an inside move. As you're going to see, he goes against Ryan O'Callaghan. He starts up the field, but he comes underneath him. And I'm sure O'Callaghan watched a lot of film on him this week. That's something that that you don't see a lot of from DeMarcus Ware. He's typically a speed rusher, stays to the outside. That time he used the counter move, and it worked for him. So it's third down and 20, a loss of 10. Underneath it's Charles making the catch. And he's brought down short of the 40. It's fourth down. So the defense comes up with a couple of plays. One by Spencer, the latest by DeMarcus Ware, who finally breaks the tape on 2009 and gets his first sack. Well it's hard to call plays when you're Todd Haley and, and every time you do you call a pass play you know you're getting pressure in the backfield and your your quarterback is at risk of getting sacked and so you know they're going to start trying to shorten things up move them a little bit they've had a little bit of success when they've got them on the edge I would expect to see more of that Patrick Creighton is now waiting for the punt or rather Terrence Newman Creighton is out of there and Newman lets it go over his head. And look at where the Cowboys will have to start with it. Their first possession of the second half will start at their own three as they trail Kansas City by seven. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Go to Southwest.com, grab your bag, it's on. By Direct TV, no one else has all your favorite channels in HD. And by the GMC Sierra, the official vehicle of the NFL. Well the Dallas Cowboys start inside their own 20 for the third time in their last four possessions. Kansas City has all 10 of their points off the two Dallas turnovers. And the Cowboys start at their own three. Delayed handoff. It's Marion Barber who's lucky to get out of the end zone. First guy there was Dorsey. And he let Barber slip away a loss of two. But a good play by Glenn Dorsey. See him right here in the middle. He does a good job there of, of getting pressure right away. I thought Dallas, what they did there offensively with the play call in terms of trying to show pass to, to soften up the linebackers, keep them from hitting it. And Jason Garrett, the offensive coordinator. Not a lot of fun calling plays from this part on the field. Second down and 12. 
from their own one. Romo's going to put it up. Pass is caught by Witten. And a gain of seven. Realize that the Kansas City defense, they had 10 sacks all of last year. They traded away Jared Allen prior to the season to the Vikings. Since the start of last year, Allen has 21 sacks coming in at the start of the day. He has a fumble return for 70 yards and a touchdown today at St. Louis. And the Chiefs, the last two years, have 15 sacks. That's it. As a group, six fewer than Jared Allen. It's third and five. Play action from Romo, who throws high and incomplete for Creighton. And it's three and out for the Dallas offense, and the Chiefs should end up with good field position. Well, I like what Clancy Pendergast, defensive coordinator, dialed up here because you remember earlier in the first half, Leggett, the corner, when they brought pressure, he played soft. This time, you know, third and medium, he was up on Creighton. And with pretty good coverage, it forced Romo to try to make a perfect throw. Now, the ball got away from him, but even with a good throw, I don't think they complete that one. McBriar has one good 52 yard punt in this game, and this one is ugly. Takes a good Dallas bounce, however, and will stop rolling at the Chiefs 44. Here's a look at that tight defense. Coverage by Leggett on Patrick Creighton in completion, then a 48 yard punt. Chiefs have it up seven. Chiefs have led longer today than they have the first four games combined. They lead by seven. They start with very good field position at their own 44. But offensively, they have not done much at all. And Castle's been hit 13 times, sacked three times. Penalty flag on the play as Wade makes the catch. Run down by Newman after a game of eight and a half. Uh, it looked like someone there on Kansas City might have moved a little early. Could have been on Spencer of Dallas as you look at Ron Winter talk to the Chiefs. Offside. Defense number 93 in the neutral zone of the snap. A five yard penalty. Repeat first down. You can say Matt Castle's been hit 13 times, but here's what some of it's looked like. Sacked five times last week. 13 times this season and Troy this is only two weeks in a row that the same starting five have started on the offensive line in front of Matt Castle and that shows itself a lot. Yeah they've reshuffled that right side and, and that's the way it's been all year for Matt Castle. It also doesn't help out in the running game as the Chiefs accepted that penalty on first and five again of two by Larry Johnson. You know you talk about how they've shuffled things around Scott Pioli who took over this year as the general manager and you know he's he's trying to build something him and Todd Haley and there's a reason why those jobs were open and you know Scott who did a tremendous job there in New England four time executive of the year and in time I'm confident that they'll get the right people in place but so far they're just trying to identify some poor players that they can go to battle with and start building a program second and three pressure on Castle and the pass is caught penalty flag on the play Leonard Pope made the catch one of the newer additions to this Chiefs roster which is in flux and it's another offside against Dallas. You talk about Leonard Pope he was brought in offside defense number 99 lined up in the neutral zone penalty decline the play results in a first down. That's Olshansky. Leonard Pope was brought in the, the week before the Giants game last week and then he's on the field and there's a number of guys like that Bobby Wade signed in the middle of September all of a sudden he's your starting wide receiver. Talked about Ryan O'Callaghan starting at right tackle. And so they are very active. Scott Pioli and that personnel department very active in picking up some players that can improve positions as they go. Here's a completion of Wayne. Well played out on the edge by Brady James. And Terrence Newman a gain of four. You know, in a lot of ways, Joe, they're they're going about it the way that Jimmy Johnson and Jerry Jones did back in '89 with the Dallas Cowboys when I was a rookie. It was, you know, almost comical. Every Tuesday they would work out another set of players, and and then on Wednesday we'd go into our meetings and we'd see about six or seven guys that were going to be lining up for us, you know, in the game. And 
obviously it's hard to have success and Kansas City hasn't had a lot of success. But I really like the approach and, and I think that there's confidence in those that are now running this team. Another flag Ratliff may have come across early in the pass for Wade incomplete. This could be the third offside. It could be two fouls. There's a hold in the middle as well. There are three flags laying on the field. Ratliff came across in a flash. We'll get the call from Ron Winter. Offside. Defense number 90. Holding. Offense number 63. Those penalties offset. Repeat. Second down. Could be calling that against Allman. There is no number 63 on the offensive line for the Chiefs. Right now, the Kansas City Chiefs wearing the helmets of the Dallas Texans are right on the edge of field goal range as the play clock winds down to three. Chiefs get it away, and Johnson on second down picks up three. When we talk about some of the personnel changes. How about Todd Haley, you know, there at the end of preseason and then him firing offensive coordinator Chan Gailey. And that's why we see him now as the offensive coordinator. And it was a complete overhaul once he took over those responsibilities. The terminology changed from what it was under Chan Gailey. The system changed. So it's basically like going all the way back to April and May OTAs. You know, they're in the last week of preseason, so this is still an offense with regards to that. That's finding their way. Brooking got there a step too late in a first down for Kansas City. Castle got drilled as Bradley made the catch. A gain of seven in a first down. And Matt Castle is getting accustomed to this, and he knows that if he's going to deliver the ball, he's got to hang in the pocket and, and know that he's going to get hit at the end of it. And a good throw there on his part. You know, Mark Bradley just comes up the field and hooks up and and a nice completion and a nice conversion and a good drive being put together here by Kansas City. That could be offside number four as the pass is completed to Dwayne Bow. And it is four offside calls against the Dallas defense on this drive offside. Defense number 94. Five yard penalty. Repeat first down. Well, Kansas City has had no success running the football here today. Dallas knows that as you see Demarcus Ware that gets off sides, almost gets back in time. And so, you know, Demarcus Ware, Anthony Spencer, these guys understand that that Kansas City is going to throw the football and now they're trying to come after them. They've got their ears pinned back. Now on that last one, Matt Castle does a nice job with, with snap count in drawing them off sides. Castle hands to Larry Johnson. Running game hasn't done much of anything. Gain of two. Bowen in the middle of it made the stop. I, you could also maybe chalk this up to the defense, Troy, feeling a little desperation, trying to make something happen because this game is starting to legitimately slip away here. Yeah. Well, how about Matt Castle? He's the leading rusher right now for this Kansas City offense. And you know, Todd Haley expected for them to have a chance that they were going to have to run the ball a lot better than they had. But because of the turnovers, they've got the lead. This drive's been all Matt Castle. Another blitz from Dallas. Castle floats it for Bo and well out of his reach. It'll be third down when we come back. Game break coming. Here's Kurt. Like the teams, Carolina looking for its first win of the season. Jake DeLome off the play fake. Finds the tight end Jeff King for a 17-yard score. They're battling with the Redskins at 17-9 right now in the third quarter. Joe Troy and Ben. All right, Kurt. We'll look at where Carolina sits. Playoff team from a year ago. Here's a throw by Castle incomplete. It's fourth down, an ugly looking play. And the field goal unit will come on for Kansas City. Bradley, the intended receiver. 38 yard try coming. Suck up, who is hit from 47.
So far in the NFL, four for four. Is this rookie out of South Carolina? Good snap, good hold, and the kick is good. So three points, a 13 to three lead, but still an unhappy and frustrated head coach. That's the guy who's leading by 10. A nine play drive capped with a field goal of 38 yards. It's a 10 point game again, six and a half to go, third quarter. And this could be an absolutely crippling loss for the Dallas Cowboys. You talk about a clock ticking on the Cowboys, on their head coach, right on down the line as Ogletree on the return loses the football and the Cowboys catch a break. Here is legendary and Hall of Fame coach Hank Stram, long time, ran the Chiefs. Come on, Lenny. Pump it in there, baby. Just keep matriculating the ball down the field, boys. Keep negotiating that ball right down the field, boys. I told you they'd make it in there. Yes, sir, boys. <laughs> Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Chevy. Put us up against anyone and may the best car win. Tick, tick, tick. Six and a half to go third quarter, and the running game is gone for Dallas. See what they did against the Giants, Carolina. Second half totally shut down last week at Denver. Nothing here today. Pass is dropped by Creighton. Ugly. You know, we've talked a lot about the turnovers as far as, okay, you know, what's been the difference here in this ball game? You know, another thing that needs to be addressed is the drop balls. I mean, Miles Austin has a chance there in that first half to make a catch for a touchdown. Sam Hurd has a ch had a chance, and we've seen Patrick Creighton struggle catching it, you know, here also. Four drops so far for the Cowboys. Two in the end zone. Here's Barber as they try to establish something on the ground and Barber brought down by Williams a gain of four. This is a defense Kansas City. You can say what you want about Denver last week doing what they did and Mike Nolan and right on down the line and the personnel they have. This is still a rather young defense and they come in allowing 379 yards a game 28th ranked in the NFL. They've given up 211 yards, but that's just a stat. It's 13 to 3, Kansas City. Romo flushed, buying time, and he hits Austin, who hangs on. What a play there between Romo and Miles Austin. Better on the back end. First down. Yeah, you're going to see Tony Romo as he moves to his right. And this is a dangerous throw that he makes here, but one that he had to make if they were going to have any chance of converting this third down. Miles Austin, you know, he was expecting just the slip screen there at wide out, but he's working away the opposite direction that Tony Romo got flushed. That's just a good execution by Tony Romo. Here's Barber. Barber picks up nothing. Dorsey on the stop. You say this about the receivers, Troy, of all the guys that Romo's thrown to today and maybe the early part of the season, certainly today, Miles Austin, that guy, number 19, has been his most reliable. Yeah, he has. And I know that they've wanted to get him going because, as I said earlier in the game, you know, they don't have any explosive players. And the other guy that provided that was Felix Jones. And they miss him. They miss him a lot. He's missed a lot of games because of injury. But all you got to do is look at what he had done when he's been playing and you can tell that that production is definitely missing. Good pocket for Romo on second and ten penalty flag and what a tackle. What a tackle by Flowers on Barber as somehow Barber gets up. But a flag is down and Gerard comes out of there without his helmet on. Cowboys think it's against Kansas City.
Illegal use of hands to the face. Defense number 95. Five yard penalty and a first down. That's why Gerard lost his helmet. He's right in the middle. They got Andre Gerard there at center. Ron Edwards is right on top of him. And helmet comes flying off, hand underneath the face mask. And you know, right now, Marion Barber, he still doesn't look like he's quite right to me. And that's to be expected coming off of the injury that he has. And now they've got Tashar Choice in the ball game, and that's what I was going to say. It looks to me like Tashar Choice, because of that injury, I mean Marion Barber's the heartbeat of this offense, but Tashar Choice may be able to give them a little more. Romo in trouble. Down he goes. Gilberry was there first, a loss of three. Looks like Tony Romo was trying to hit Martellus Bennett going down the middle, and the pocket just collapsed on him. And Martellus there up the seam, might have had a chance, was able to get in there behind Jared Page, the safety. Three guys there meeting, meeting Romo in the backfield. Second down and 13. And off to Choice. Nice run by Tashard Choice. Yard and a half shy of a first down, picked up 12. We talked a little bit about Tashard Choice. You know, last week in that game against Denver and, and what he has been able to do as a fourth round pick out of Georgia Tech and a very versatile, a very versatile player. And someone in light of these injuries that they've had at the running back position has has been solid for them. You saw a little bit more of a burst there on that last play than what we've certainly been able to see in this game from Marion Barber. Third down and a long one. Romo throws behind but caught by Creighton on his back hip a gain of nine and a first down for Dallas down by ten. You know not something you see a lot from Dallas as far as Tony Romo moving the pocket on a sprint out but something that I like you know, when you're talking about third down it opens up the throwing lanes for the quarterback and at least it gives the defense something to think about and knowing that he's not going to always be lined up right behind the center at seven yards. Two third down conversions on this drive and here's choice getting around page to shard choice. Touchdown. Well you called it Troy and there is no doubt now that choice should be just that the choice at running back right now for Dallas. He showed that burst and goes 36 yards for a big Cowboy touchdown. And a good job up front. You're going to see. I mean, he's he, he doesn't he hasn't gotten touched yet, and doesn't get touched until the very end of this play. There, an offensive line coming off the ball and opening up a pretty good hole for Tashar Choice. Todd Haley just threw the challenge flag. There was a delayed call for the touchdown. You can see Haley say he believes the Choice stepped out of bounds. Kansas City has challenged the ruling on the field, but the runner did not step out of bounds prior to crossing the goal line. That's clearly a touchdown. Looks like a wasted challenge. Left foot stayed in by choice, 36 yards, and exactly what the Cowboys needed. Look at the call when we come back. Second rushing touchdown for choice. Here's a call from Ron Winter. After review, the ruling on the field stands. It is a touchdown. Kansas City is charged for the team timeout. You can see Todd Haley say, my fault, guys. He had a good look at it right down the sideline there, but he threw the challenge flag. And it cost the Chiefs a timeout. Meanwhile, second longest run of the career of Deshard Choice. And this extra point from Nick Folk, who's never missed one, in his three-year NFL career to make it a three-point game. Thank you. 
Go back and take a look at that last play by Tashar Choice. Jason Witten does a good job of sealing it there. And then Leonard Davis comes around, kicks out the other backer, which opens up the hole there for Tashar Choice to score. And so with time winding down here in the third quarter, we are set up for what should be, I think, for lack of a better term, a rather interesting fourth quarter here coming up from Kansas City in a game the Dallas Cowboys certainly can't afford to lose with the kind of competition that exists in the NFC East. Well, I think if you look at this game and, and Dallas has struggled and we understand that and Kansas City has had some things that have gone their way that has allowed them to have the lead here in this ballgame. I think that's one of the reasons why Todd Haley was upset on the last offensive possession that they weren't able to come away with more than a field goal because he understands that Tony Romo and this Dallas offense can get pretty hot and can get explosive in a hurry and we saw that drive that was a pretty methodical drive there by Dallas being able to cut this ball game to a three point lead now Kansas City knows they they can't sit on this thing I mean their defense is not going to be able to hold up for the next 15 plus minutes so the onus really now for Kansas City comes onto their offense and what are they going to be able to do Beeler hits it. Jamal Charles will take an eight. We look ahead to what should be a really good matchup and a lot of points next week in New Orleans. Two undefeated teams will go at it. The Saints who are having a bye week this week preparing for the Giants who are taking apart the Oakland Raiders as we speak. Free game starts at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific, and the Giants are up 41 to 7 over the Raiders. Well, that, that game is going to be a lot of fun. Can you imagine what the Saints will do given an, an extra week to prepare? Here is Johnson. He doesn't get much. Two right up the middle. And for Drew Brees, who has nine touchdowns, just two interceptions. And it'll be Eli Manning trying to not find Darren Sharper in the secondary for the Saints. Who already has five interceptions, two touchdowns in his first year in New Orleans under the guidance of defensive coordinator Greg Williams. Yeah, I think if you look at the Saints defensively, you say, what's been the difference? First and foremost, Greg Williams, you mentioned him. And then secondly, the job that Darren Sharper has done, you know, getting the interceptions, which seems to happen every year for him. Here's a pass over the middle and a penalty flag flies. Mike Cox, the fullback, the intended receiver, Brady James in coverage. A minute 12 left in the third quarter in a three point game. Pass interference. Defense number 56. Penalized at the spot of the foul and a first down. You see Brady James, 56, and you know he's the one in coverage. Just gets there a little bit earlier than what the ball does. Pretty easy call. You know what is interesting I think that right now there's a lot of pressure on Matt Castle and, and even more so on this offensive line because of the fact they have not run the football anywhere close to what Todd Haley was hoping they would be able to coming into this game and they're having to rely purely on the right arm of Castle. Here is Johnson. And for Larry that's his longest run of the day to support what you're saying five yards. That's the longest run Larry Johnson. Who was a two time pro bowler and had those great years in 05 and 06 when he led the NFL in rushes and rush yards per game, the most 100 yard games. He is a shadow of his former self. The offensive line in front of him isn't helping him much. Second and five. Pressure from Dallas. Castle throws and the pass incomplete. Looking for Ryan. He had fallen down. And again, Matt Castle has to get up and peel himself off the ground. And Brandon Albert, last year's first round pick, can't get up. The starting left tackle. Castle's been hit 16 times in this game. Well, they're pretty thin at the backup position, so it'll be interesting to see how they're going to try to manage that. Brandon Albert not able to go, but you know, there's Demarcus Ware just kind of going right through him, and on the outside, they just fell down. But you're right. I mean, Matt Castle under a lot of pressure, and with Brandon Albert, you know, in Duke Way is a guy who that they brought in 
in a trade with the Miami Dolphins who started at right tackle. The first three weeks of the season but he is inactive he would be the guy who you would think would step in you know at that left tackle position now they're gonna have to shuffle some things around. Looking. Down around the leg area the ankle left ankle for Albert and there it is with Olshansky just falling on the left leg. Of Brandon Albert. Second season out of Virginia. And he will limp away. And Wade Smith. Former Jet 6'4, 296 comes in. And there's Wade, and he will line up at left tackle. And he'll have his hands full with the Marcus Ware. You have to figure they'll come right after number seven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They've come after you know anyone who's been out there so far so that will continue. And when you don't have the running game like Kansas City doesn't have here today. Yeah, that's going to make things even more difficult here for Matt Castle throwing the ball. Where is out on that side. Pass is fluttering and incomplete. Pressure by DeMarcus Ware on the play. Yeah, then they bring over Sean Ryan, knowing that you know he'll give them maybe a little bit more help with Albert down, and he's still able to get in there and, and get on Matt Castle on the backside, and and so that's that's the problem. I mean, the ball's got to come out. You got to run some quicker drops. You got to leave people in now in order to protect. Can't afford to take the sack, and it becomes very difficult then to create any type of plays that are going to advance the chains. Look like Ware comes off a little banged up. Ugly punt by Colquitt. And Creighton stays away. Creighton had been replaced by Newman earlier. This Thursday on an all new episode of Fringe, the team races to stop a technological nightmare. It's stealing the dreams of ordinary people and turning them into killing machines. New cases, endless impossibilities. Fringe, your discretion is advised. All new episode Thursday night 9 Eastern 8 Central right here on Fox. And you look at Tony Romo longest streak of his career without a touchdown pass. He's won back to back games. And now in his third. Romo throws and hits Austin who's been his best target today. 14 yards and a first down with eight seconds left in the quarter. Dallas goes with a two tight end set, two wide receivers. Miles Austin on that route, remember, that was the route last week that they tried throwing down in the red zone on Champ Bailey. They, they miscommunicated on, and Champ Bailey was able to get the interception. You can imagine how much time they spent on that this week. First NFL start, career high six catches for Miles Austin. We go to the fourth three point game back after this from your local Fox station. Forty two degree day, cloudy in Kansas City, and a three point Chiefs lead. Chiefs fans are thinking, here we go again. 0 and 4, in danger of losing, there was a 10 point lead. Marion Barber back in at running back picks up two yards out to the 40 yard line. Reason why the Chiefs are in the ball game, let alone leading it because of turnovers a couple one on the muff punt by Patrick Creighton and then on a center quarterback exchange knocked out by Leonard Davis. Second and eight. Romo down the sideline for Austin. And Austin makes a play on the ball. What a play by Miles Austin, who's having the game of his career. Took it away from Brandon Card, 34 yards. How about this for his first NFL start? That was pretty good coverage too and Miles Austin gets by him and Romo lays it up and gives him a chance car gets turned around and Miles Austin just simply goes up over him and fights for the ball you see it looked like Carr had it 
had better possession of it at one time, but Austin just simply took it away from him. Here's Barber. Gallops right through the middle of the defense. Down inside the 10. Page on the stop. And the Cowboys have come alive. 17 yards for Marion Barber. Yeah, and you kind of knew that at some point it was going to happen. I think that last possession that they had when they went down and got the touchdown really got them going a little bit and believing. And then they get the big play to Miles Austin, and they're able to start mixing it up a little bit. That's one of the better runs we've seen so far here today from Marion Barber. And now an offensive penalty is Flozell Adams, his second of the day. Ball well, start. Offense number 76. Five yard penalty. Remains first down. Miles Austin with a career high seven catches. But if he could have anything back, he had one that was thrown a little out of his reach and then had his hands on this one knocked away by Brandon Carr. But beside that, he has been the go to receiver clearly for Tony Romo today. Good to see Mike McCord, the equipment manager, giving him a little pat on the helmet. First and goal, handoff, choice. A gain of only one. But you go back to the previous play when when Flozell Adams false starts again. You know, why is Dallas struggling when they get in the red zone? Why have they not been able to get more points? Well, that's a big part of it. They've had a lot of penalties. They've had a lot of false starts. And so then you're set, you're in the hole again. And it's very, very difficult. Jerry Jones sweating through this one on a 43 degree day in Kansas City second and goal. Pressure Austin trying to make a move and he can't get around Brandon Carr a gain of only three third and goal from the 10. Well, they motion to shard choice out to the wide side to Tony Romo's left away from where Miles Austin was. And I didn't see anybody even go out there with them defensively. Looked like if Tony Romo had seen that, that nobody adjusted to him, could have got it right out to his hands quickly and might have been able to score. Third down and goal. Romo over the middle and through the hands of Austin. Well, that's another one that we'll take a look at. A look from here, like Miles Austin had a chance to catch that ball. You want to throw it high if you're the quarterback. That's the way from danger, and he does. And you know, it would have been a nice catch, no question. You don't want to throw this thing low because sometimes it's hard to see the guys that are coming underneath, the defenders, that is. Romo gives him a chance. He's just not able to connect. So through the hands of Austin, 121 straight passes without a touchdown for Romo. And this game is now top. And the pressure for Kansas City is back on their offense. We'll talk about that when we come back. Tied at 13. Today's game is sponsored by Autotrader.com. Now size up the best deals on new cars at Autotrader.com, the ultimate automotive marketplace by Bud Light. With the just right taste that's not too heavy, not too light, the difference is drinkability. And by Lexus in the first ever HS Hybrid. The Dallas Cowboys offensively have put up more than double the yardage of the Kansas City Chiefs. The problem is they can't score touchdowns. They only won the 36 yard run by Tashard Choice. We're tied at 13. On the return, it's Charles. Brought down after a return of 20 yards by Sam Hurd. Out comes Matt Castle in a 13 13 game. Someday, Cars will use infrared to monitor the driver's face and alert them when they're not paying attention to the road ahead. The first ever HS Hybrid, only from Lexus.
Tie game, fourth quarter, 11 minutes left. Kansas City offense hasn't done much at all. And in what was a lateral, back to Larry Johnson, a backward pass. Anthony Spencer made a big play, a loss of seven. Boy, you're right about that, Joe. That was a dangerous throw right there and a call by Todd Haley. That would have been a backwards lateral had Larry Johnson not have caught that. And so here we are again for Kansas City. And you talk about how, how much they have struggled on first down. And here they are looking at second and 17 because of a seven yard loss. Goes down as a running play on that lateral. And a loss of seven. Castle has time, and now time runs out. Play made by Ratliff as Castle came up the middle. A gain of one, no sack, but effective nonetheless by the Dallas defense. It's third and a mile. Yeah, third and a mile, and you know, I talked about it that it's you cannot expect Kansas City defensively to go out there again and be expected to stop the Dallas Cowboys. They, they haven't done it. They gave up the touchdown. They gave up the three points on the last possession. And offensively, they've got to do something. They haven't done anything throughout this ball game. And it, it, this is going to be very difficult here on third and long. And movement prior to the snap. Here at home, a false start. False start. Offense number 75. A five-yard penalty. He makes third down. That's Ryan O'Callaghan, a former Patriot. He was claimed on the 6th of September, making his second start at right tackle. Well, you've got to be real careful. I mean, the likelihood of, of the Chiefs converting a third and 21 is next to impossible. And so you try to take something intermediate to help with field position on the punt, or do you play conservatively and just try to take the turnover completely out of it and hand it off here. And now a delay of game. Delay of game. Offense. Five yard penalty. Remains still down. Well, this is anything but a clinic, and for Todd Haley, who's known as an emotional coach, whether it's assistant or head coach, he's running this offense, and they're going backward when it matters most. Yeah, this is pretty pitiful. It's third and 26. They fake the handoff. Castle throws over the middle, incomplete. Big hit by Allen Ball, and they throw a late flag. For the hit on Bobby Wade. It would be an automatic first down if it's a personal foul. Let's see if that's the call. Well, you see Bobby Wade comes over and it's helmet to helmet. You know, Alan Ball lowers his head and you cannot come in helmet to helmet on a defenseless receiver. And it's a lot like the quarterback rule, the protection that he has in the pocket. And you may not like it, but it, it actually came in with a shoulder. It wasn't a bad play on his part, but you cannot go to a head. You cannot go to the headgear. Personal foul. Unnecessary roughness. Contact to the head of a defenseless receiver. 15 yard penalty and a first down. This happened against the Kansas City Chiefs last week with Jared Page. Now on third and 26. It's a first down because of this hit by Allen Ball. Well, Allen Ball hits him with his shoulder pad, but it is to the headgear. You see the head snap. And you saw Wade Phillips on the sidelines trying to indicate, yeah, but he hit him with his shoulder pad. It doesn't matter. They changed it this year. It's not just helmet to helmet. It is shoulder pad to helmet as well. I go back to the protection given to the quarterback in the pocket. I don't like those rules. I mean, it's a violent game. But you can't fault the call. The official is calling it by the rule. Delayed handoff to Larry Johnson in a running game for Kansas City. Still isn't doing anything. And Spencer's had a pretty good game. A loss of one. And we've got another lineman down. Now for Kansas City. That's Goff. If he can't continue. The Chiefs would be using their final replacement along the offensive line. Take a break and come back second and 11 when we return. 
Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Sprint. This is the NFL Now with NFL Mobile Live only from Sprint, the Now Network, official wireless service sponsor of the NFL. Well, Goff is out. Brandon Albert out. The biggest play of this fourth quarter was the penalty and the personal foul against Allen Ball on third and 26. Gave the Chiefs offense some life. Can they do anything with it? Second and 11. The pass is caught. That's Bo. And he fights. Brought down right at the marker. Got 11. Well, they got Wade Smith there at left tackle and they give him a little bit of help with the with the back to his side and then you've got Bo and he just snags it. It was good timing there by Matt Castle turning that one loose. And Bo initially looked like he might have been able to just jump forward and pick up the first down initially gave up some yardage but at the end still fought his way for it. So first down Kansas City. Remember that penalty by Allen Ball as a handoff is to Larry Johnson. Picks up eight. Here's that penalty again, third and 26. And instead of a punt, because of that hit, Dave Campo, the defensive backs coach and former Cowboys head coach, upset. Wade Phillips, the same, saying that he hit either with his shoulder or on the shoulder in the chest. The hit came up into the head. And it was a free first down for Kansas City. Here's Johnson getting to the edge. First down Kansas City in the longest run of the day for Larry Johnson who ends up on the Dallas bench first down. It's been pretty tough sledding here for Larry Johnson but you're going to see Brady James scrapes right off the edge there and just enough to where Larry Johnson is able to outrun him. You know they've been trying to get him inside trying to get him inside. They've not had any success running to the outside. It's expected then to think that Dallas would start converging there on the middle and Larry Johnson finally able to get some some pretty good yards with an outside run. Here he is again. They stay with a hot hand 18 yards his last two carries. He gets three. We go down to the field and Pam Oliver. Well Joe as we're watching um, some of these injured Chiefs get worked on Albert they're working on his left ankle. They've taped it and they cut that tape off and then started to retape it for golf. Trainers are centering on his neck. Uh, we've seen the situations like this where that typically uh, suggests a, a stinger but we're getting no official information from them right now. All right Pam. So no replacements left for the offensive line for the Chiefs. Dallas brings a blitz. Castle fires and the pass incomplete for Bobby Wade. And Ken Hamlin thought better about a hit that he could have laid on Bobby Wade as he came across the middle. But a flag is down. Test number 93. A five yard penalty. Repeat second down. It's another offside against this Dallas defense. Wow. You know Kansas City who's had problems converting on third down would have been facing a third and seven third and eight down in distance there and because of the penalty now they repeat second down and it's second and two and that last play excuse me Joe that last play was one of the few times in this game that Castles had both time to throw and an open receiver and yet they weren't able to connect with something down the field. 12 penalties five times for offside and Larry Johnson goes nowhere. DeMarcus Ware makes the stop and now it's third down for Kansas City. Right now Kansas City is knocking on the door of the probably outside field goal range for suck up. It would be a long one, 57 yards from here. I think Todd Haley's thinking two more downs here if they don't pick it up on third down. Castle keeps it and picks it up. He's been knocked around all day but he plows forward for six yards on a quarterback sneak. Well you see the hole there. That's a pretty good job when you got the quarter. 
The defensive tackle out, lots of tackle out wide to his left, and it opened up a pretty good lane just to get in there behind that left side. Tenth play of this drive. Castle keeps it, steps up, throws, incomplete for Bobby Wade. And with pressure by Anthony Spencer, and we've called his name quite a bit. Second and ten, but inside field goal range now are the Chiefs with under five to play. You know, they'd certainly be happy with a field goal out of this possession, especially the way that it started with the third and long and getting the penalty and the first down. But you can bet that Todd Haley is not going to get conservative here, knowing that he's facing a Dallas offense that has been able to move the football pretty well here in this second half, or at least on the last couple of possessions. And it's a false start. False start. Offense number 54. The five yard penalty. Remain second down. We welcome in a new audience. It's a throwback day here in Kansas City. They build it as the game that never was. Back in the early 60s, the Cowboys didn't want to play the Dallas Texans because the Texans were a better team. Now they're the call the Kansas City Chiefs, and the Chiefs have a chance to beat the Dallas Cowboys here in week five. Charles out of the backfield, brought down by Brooking on second and 15. A gain of four. Yeah, you know, I'm a little surprised that they haven't got Jamal Charles a little bit more involved, especially in the run game. You know, he is a guy who catches the ball well, but he's one of the few explosive players that this offense has. Larry Johnson's gotten the dose of the running game. That was a, the play that we saw earlier to Larry Johnson that was dangerous in that it's a backward lateral. He's throwing it backwards, and if you don't catch that, it's a live ball. But they got some positive yards on that play. Third down and 12. Castle throws out of the backfield. There's Charles, and a penalty flag comes in. And it's pass interference against Kansas City. This will be an interesting decision for Wade Phillips. As it stands right now, it's fourth down if you decline the penalty. You accept it, you move them back, and then you're talking about moving them out of field goal range. Yeah, and we're seeing what Wade would do, and I agree with that. You move them out of field goal range. Interference. Offense number 82. A 10 yard penalty. Repeat third down. So it would have been roughly a 47 yard field goal try, and now a 10 yard penalty on Dwayne Bow. And they're right. He, he, Dwayne Bow wants to try to make that look like a natural pick. Demarcus Ware was the guy in coverage, but you just can't go run in there and run into the guy. So now the Chiefs are out of field goal range, and they face third and 22. Castle throws underneath, hits Wade, who's brought down, falls forward to the 35. And you're talking about a long field goal try coming up by the rookie Ryan Suckup of 53 yards, which is inside his range. His long this year is 54 yards, week two, here at home against Oakland. And you're talking about if you miss, I mean, turning the ball back over to Dallas with great field position. Yeah, it'd be interesting if he had a little more confidence in his defense, you know, what his decision would be then. Kick is blocked. And the Cowboys will take over. Ratliff got in there and made the play. So the defense holds. And number 90, the Pro Bowler, Ratliff, with a hurdle, a block. And the Cowboys have it tied at 13. Someday, cars will use infrared to monitor the driver's face and alert them when they're not paying attention to the road ahead. The first ever HS Hybrid, only from Lexus.
Jay Ratliff has transformed himself from a seventh round pick out of Auburn to one of the best nose tackles and a pro bowler in the NFL. Lining up in the heart of a 3 4 defense, blocked that kick by Suck Up, and now with 3.09 left, here are the Cowboys handing it to Choice, cuts it back, and a good play, tackle made by Page. A gain of five. And if the clock was ticking earlier, with the Cowboys trailing, it continues to tick and wind down a two and two team that absolutely cannot lose here in Kansas City against the 0 4 Chiefs. Second and five. Romo with a clean pocket throws way behind Bennett. Go for a game break. Here's Kurt Menefee. The Cincinnati Bengals in Baltimore. Last 22 seconds of the game, Carson Palmer hooks up with Andre Caldwell, and Frank's upset pick looking good. It's 17-14, closing seconds of that one in the fourth quarter. Joe Troy and Pam. All right, good game there, good game here. Tied at 13, third and five for Dallas. Four for ten on third down in this game. Romo throws and there's Austin. Miles Austin. First NFL start. A Cowboy hero today. No flags. on third and Seven-point game. You're going to see Tony Romo. He goes up and he lets Andre Gerard know that he's got to pick up the blitzing linebacker that he spots. And the the, uh, the offensive line does a great job of ciphering through all that and giving him ample protection. Miles Austin on the slant route, not bad coverage, really. Just an excellent throw, good catch there by Miles Austin, and then it was just off to the races. Got out of the grasp of Maurice Leggett. And for Austin, 59 yards, 190 yards on the day for Miles Austin. He wanted to make sure he got across the goal line, which he did. Didn't end up getting back on the football cleanly, but Jay Ratliff, who blocked the field goal try, set that up. And Tony Romo, all smiles now, his first touchdown pass in 123 throws he almost Troy went three full games without a touchdown pass and despite the big penalty on Allen Ball the last time the Chiefs had it on third and 26 for a hit to the head of a defenseless receiver he's all smiles and it's a seven point Dallas lead and it's up to the Kansas City offense to do something about it. Charles on the return. Wrestled down shy of the 30. And you talked about it, Troy, and you sensed it as this game was unfolding. It was a matter of time, and time was on that third and five in the pass caught by Miles Austin. Yeah, I mean, you look at Dallas over the last three possessions and what they've been able to do moving the football, coming away with points. You knew that offensively, Kansas City had to do something. Now, clearly, Kansas City has to do something now offensively. And you look at Dallas defensively. You know, they've been in this position three times in the last three weeks, and, and they have not made the stop in two of those games. And so this is a chance now for them 
to close out a ball game against a lesser team. Second and ten, pass incomplete for Bobby Wade, and we go back to Miles Austin, who's having the game of his life. Getting congratulations over on the bench. Most of that team's up watching the defense, which allowed the Giants to go 56 yards and get the game winning field goal as time expired in the opening of Cowboys Stadium, week two. And last week, allowing the Broncos to go 73 yards, capped on the 51 yard touchdown catch and run by Brandon Marshall. Blowing two fourth quarter leads, the Cowboys are two and two. Castle throws, that's Charles. And that's Brady James making the stop. Big pickup of 17 yards. We're at the two minute warning. Dallas now up by seven. It's one thing to get rid of Terrell Owens, which the Dallas Cowboys did. It's another to try and find somebody to be the playmaker. And to hit the home run on a given Sunday, Miles Austin has been that playmaker here today for Dallas. And his first NFL start for the injured Roy Williams. And now DeMarcus Ware is in on the sack. He wasn't alone. Jason Hatcher there as well, and a loss of four. Well, here's DeMarcus Ware, and it's just they've got Wade Smith who comes in off of the bench for Brandon Albert, and it's just. He's just overmatched. I mean, anything that that Castle has to hang back in the pocket and expect some time in order to allow his receivers to get down the field, he's just not going to be given that kind of time. The things that he has completed, you know, today for the most part have been pretty quick throws. Demarcus Ware had been without a sack coming into this game. 20 last year. He gets credit for that entire sack. His second of the day. And now the Chiefs have only one timeout. Remember, they lost one on a poor challenge by Todd Haley on a touchdown run by Tashard Choice. It's second and 14. Castle. Newman can't make the pick. Jumped in front of Dwayne Bow and almost came away with his second interception of the season. Yeah, and this def the defensive backs they know as well that Kansas City hasn't really done much going down the field. They don't have a lot of time so it allows them to sit on the routes a little bit more than what they otherwise would particularly in this situation and almost a ball that would have ended this ball game. Newman iced the game against Carolina with a 27 yard interception return for a touchdown. Third down and 14. Castle down the middle of the field for Wade. What a throw and catch. Huge completion, and now time is left. Plenty of it. A minute and a half, 24 yards from Matt Castle. And a timeout. We welcome in a new audience. Ron Winter the referee just stopped play if you're just joining us the Dallas Cowboys have scored 17 unanswered points in the last 15 minutes six seconds and they are reviewing this play which looked like a clean catch all the way it was third down and 14 and Bobby Wade was good for a first down so we're under a booth review with under two minutes to go and here are the key plays. Ratliff with a field goal block in a 13 13 game and then having the game of his life Miles Austin scampers into the end zone nearly a 200 yard day receiving for Austin and the Cowboys lead 20 to 13 but now the Chiefs are moving it here's the catch and a look from the other side and and that is clearly a catch by Bobby Wade. Yeah, really nice job by Bobby Wade, and that's where he's best. You know, I was surprised actually that Minnesota even let him go, that he was available for Kansas City. A guy over the last couple of years had 50 plus receptions for Minnesota, but 
you know, a, a tough catch, takes the hit as soon as he catches the ball, but hangs on to it. And on that play, Orlando Skandrick for Dallas was lined up on him and hesitated just enough that created some room there for Matt Castle to fit that in before Ken Hamlin came over and made the big hit. We'll get the call from Ron Winter. Play should stand. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. It is a catch. First down, Kansas City. The game clock will start on the ready for play. So because of that review it gives Kansas City a break by stopping the clock. They have only one timeout remaining. Yeah you wonder who it helped most Joe. Did it help Kansas City get regrouped. It sure seemed that way or did it hurt Kansas City because Dallas was then able to kind of regroup and call something else. Castle over the middle passes caught by Dwayne Bow. And here are the Chiefs. Setting up. Inside the Dallas 20 and a player is down. I believe that's Newman. It is with a minute four left. Well, Dwayne Bow, he's a big target and he uses his body well and comes down over the top of Terrence Newman. He goes right down too when when the contact is made. The charge timeout against Dallas Newman is up and walking around which is good to see. But for the Cowboys who are all smiles on the sideline in the owner's suite and I'm sure any Cowboy fan back in Texas and beyond thinking finally they got over the hump against Kansas City. Now the Chiefs have a first down to the Dallas 19 with plenty of time left. Well this is an area where even last year Dallas defensively was very good statistically but when they had to make a play late in games no matter how well they had played early they failed to do it more times than not. And that's been the case here in the early going of 09. On first down Castle end zone. Bradley incomplete out of the back of the end zone Jenkins was out there defending and we'll say it again the Cowboys had their defense on the field when the Giants went 56 yards to win it week two Wade Phillips who took over the defense had his group on the field when Denver went 73 yards last week in the fourth quarter eventually won that game by a final of 17 10. There's a shot there of Anthony Spencer and you can imagine Demarcus Ware feels the same way but it looks like these guys are starting to tire up front. Castle underneath Charles. Not much room to run. The clock will continue to wind Brooking on the stop again of three. Brings up third down. And obviously Matt Castle a guy who Got his first chance to play since high school last year has not been in a lot of these situations. Out of the shotgun castle fires incomplete for Bobby Wade. He's looking around for a flag won't get it. Scandrick was defending and it's fourth and seven. So the Dallas defense which needs to make a play. If they make one here Dallas will move to three and two. Well you see Bobby Wade he's trying to get inside Orlando Skandrick actually playing that one pretty well. He was inside leverage he's he's entitled to that spot just as much as what Bobby Wade is. Newman on the sideline Allen Ball in the lineup for Dallas. Fourth and seven Castle throws end zone bow. Touchdown. Todd Haley would give a little consideration to going for two here. I mean, if you feel that, if you feel that maybe you're outmatched going against Dallas, maybe you go for two. Here's the route, Dwayne Bow, just a, an inside seam route and a perfect throw. Great job on his part of hanging on to it. 
But to go back to my previous point, Todd Haley does not hesitate. He runs the kicker out. He's going to tie this thing up. We're under a booth review. Every look we have of it is that it's a clean catch by Dwayne Bow, his third touchdown of the season. And the Dallas defense on fourth and seven could not stop Kansas City. And a 16 yard touchdown catch by Dwayne Bow. Well, Dwayne Bow came up big on a couple of catches there on that last possession, the one earlier that he caught on Terrence Newman. And this guy is a big physical receiver. He's got good hands, not great speed, but you can see he uses his body there. Todd Haley, you know, obviously excited about that. And a good call on his part. You know, being able to get a good body or big body down the middle. Matt Castle hangs in the pocket, delivers a perfect strike. After review, rolling out of field, it's confirmed. It is a touchdown. And we are an extra point away from a 2020 game. Tell you what, they might want to think about getting on Jay Ratliff. Number nine right there. He blocked a field goal try earlier in this fourth quarter. Tied again. Over the last 16 and a half minutes, the Cowboys had scored 17 straight points without an answer from Kansas City until now. What's at stake? Well, everybody's looking up at the Giants, who will take on New Orleans next week, right here on Fox, in a matchup of the two best teams in the NFC. Dallas trying to go to three and two. Ratliff helps set him up, blocking a field goal try of 53 yards, then 59 yards to Miles Austin. Put Dallas in front. With just over two minutes remaining. Austin having a huge day, but on fourth and seven, 16 yards to Dwayne Bow. We're now tied at 20. And why not? Miles Austin is now waiting for the kickoff from Ryan Suckup. Trying to add to his big day. Austin 190 yards receiving on a career high nine catches. Here comes Austin. Scandrick, they fake a reverse. Austin is brought down from behind. Play made by Javon Belcher. 23 yard return 17 seconds left I'm gonna say Joe this thing's a long way from being over when you consider the fact that Dallas still has two timeouts left with 17 seconds I mean they've got time to get a big play down the field and call a timeout and still have time for one more play and work any part of the field to use that last timeout to get the field goal team out on the on the surface but they've got to get something big here right away. Pass well underthrown. The great 13 seconds left. Are we headed to overtime in Kansas City? Wade Phillips, who took over the defense. There have been flashes where the defense has looked better than a year ago. Brian Stewart was fired. He's now an assistant with the Philadelphia Eagles. But playing four quarters, they haven't been able to put it all together and come up with a big stop late in three of the five games played. And now the Cowboys will take a knee, and we are going to be headed to overtime. The all important coin flip is coming next. That's the end of the game. A refresher on the overtime rules. 
Ron Winter corrects himself. He says that's not the end of the game. That's the end of regulation. One 15 minute quarter. Two timeouts per team. All replays are initiated from the booth. And it's sudden death. And if the Dallas Cowboys lose here in Kansas City, it would be just that sudden death in the NFC East and overall in the NFC for Tony Romo and this Dallas Cowboys team coming in taking on the 0 and 4 Chiefs and letting Matt Castle and company go right down on the field after the go ahead touchdown and score the game tying touchdown to Dwayne Bow. In overtime, the first team to score wins the game. Each team is allowed two timeouts. We have fourth quarter timing, and all replay challenges will be handled by the replay official in the booth. Dallas, it's your choice, and once again, the Texas logo is heads, the AFC logo is tails. Your choice is? It's called heads. It is tails. Kansas City will start with a football. Last time they had it on fourth and seven. Castle, first year with the Chiefs, wearing the helmet of the Dallas Texans. Got it to Bo for the tying touchdown. Overtime. Up next. So far this season there have only been two overtime games and the team winning the coin toss is 2 and 0 oh. Kansas City will start this overtime period with a football and Jamal Charles second year player former sprinter and all big 12 running back at Texas will return it if Beeler gives him a chance Beeler was drafted for touchbacks and he hits this one sideways takes a bounce Charles a chance to return it out across the 25 they'll mark him just shy of the 27 Ogletree downfield made the stop and here's Matt Castle it hasn't always been pretty in this game he does have two touchdowns he's been hit a lot the one thing he hasn't done today or really for the most part all season is turn the ball over he's only thrown two picks yeah, and both of those came in week two against Oakland. I think he's got to feel the entire offense really based on what they did to, to tie the game up getting the ball here to open up the overtime Terrence Newman back on the field for Dallas here's Bradley on the outside good start for Kansas City out to the 41. 14 yards right out of the gate. Well, right out of the gate. And then, of course, you've got Dallas back on the field defensively. They got tired there at the end of that last possession because they're rushing the passer. They're not given the ability then to get a whole lot of rest over there on that sideline. And offensively, Kansas City, although it came late, is starting to find their groove. Castle looked to his right. It wasn't there. Penalty flag comes in. <laughs> It is a hold against Kansas City. That's a big penalty. Holding. Offense number 74. Ten yard penalty. Repeat first down. Just about to mention that Wade Smith, a backup, is out at left tackle in place of the injured Brandon Albert. Yeah, and Demarcus Ware has been lined up almost exclusively on him. And Again, another inside rush by Demarcus Ware, and that's a little bit of a change up for him. He doesn't show that one that often. And they're expecting, Wade Smith is, you're expecting the outside rush, and then when he comes inside, the natural inclination is to then grab. Ware, five tackles in this game, and his first two sacks of the season. First and 20. Handoff is to Johnson. I don't know about that play, a gain of one. Well, they're not getting much movement up front and haven't throughout the game. And so when you have a running play, even though initially you're trying to show pass, that is that slow developing, you're going to have a hard time getting much out of it. Kansas City trying to elevate themselves from the ranks of 
The winless team, second and 19. Four man rush over the middle. Pass caught by Wade, and he is enveloped at the 35 yard line by Carpenter. James out there as well, a gain of only three, and now third down and long coming up for the team. And coming into today's action was the worst third down offense in the NFL. So far today, 33% better, five out of 15. Another four man rush over the middle. Pass is caught by Bo. Carpenter makes the stop. Brady James as well, and it's fourth down. Big holding call on Wade Smith. Put the brakes on that drive, and a punt is coming from Dustin Colquitt. Yeah, we saw Kansas City a couple of times, you know, overcome that long down situation, but, you know, it's hard on every team, especially Kansas City. With the lack of time they've had because of the pass rush and just not being able to get guys down the field into enough range to pick it up. Colquitt hits it. Creighton calls for a fair catch. Miles Austin has been the star offensively for the Dallas Cowboys in his first NFL start. Didn't start that great. A drop in the end zone. But he has worked hard all day. 190 receiving yards. Outworked Brandon Carr for that ball. And then the 59 yarder for the go ahead touchdown with just over two minutes left. It came on third and five. The 190 yards, the best day by any receiver in the NFL this season. Here's Barber. I think Barber has proven that as you talked about last week in Denver the quad isn't totally right and when they've run the ball they look much better with Tashard Choice having in his hands. No doubt I mean Tashard Choice has only had six carries in this ball game but he's it's good for 63 yards. I mean he's been very productive when he's been in the game. Marion Barber just you know doesn't look like he's 100 percent and I'm a little surprised that they've stuck with him as much as what they have here. Witten looks like he doesn't know what he's doing. Romo throws for Witten off his left hand and incomplete. Witten kept looking back at Romo prior to the snap. Put his hand down and just went, and Romo almost got it to him. Yeah, and Vrabel was in coverage, and I think Vrabel was just happy that this ball was a little bit overthrown. He just, he, you know, Mike Vrabel is an outstanding outside linebacker. He's been doing it a long time, 14 years, but expecting those legs to keep up with Jason Witten is probably asking a little too much. Cowboys are 5 of 11 on third down, third and nine. Blitz. Romo throws in the direction of Austin. Incomplete. Good coverage by Brandon Carr, and it's a three and out for the Dallas offense. Chiefs should get good field position on this exchange. Well, I think you've got to give some credit there to the Kansas City defense, a, a defense that had struggled there in the fourth quarter, slowing down this Dallas offense, and yet they go three plays and get off the field. Clancy Pendergast is the defensive coordinator for the Chiefs. He was for the Arizona Cardinals last year, had a good game plan against the Cowboys. The game Arizona won in the desert in overtime on a block punt. Here is Wade on the return. Just shy of midfield. Allen Ball made the stop. And the Kansas City Chiefs are just on their side of the 50 as they start their second possession of this overtime. Well and that's what you want to do in overtime. Clearly you want to get down the field and get points but offensively first possession Kansas City is able to get a few first downs move it a little bit. They kick it and then they hold Dallas to three plays and so all of a sudden field position is flipped and now Kansas City starts 
you know, at midfield here for their second possession. Castle throws and the pass broken up. Coverage by Jenkins. Well covered was Dwayne Bowe, and Jenkins got his right hand on the football. Well, that was good coverage by Mike Jenkins, and he's starting to become a pretty good player for this Cowboy team. Had a, had a difficult rookie year, but a good job there. And, you know, more and more we see it every week that, you know, receivers, when they don't catch the ball, whether it's Dallas's receivers or Kansas City's or across the league, everybody wants a foul right away. Sometimes it's just good coverage. Second and ten, handoff to Larry Johnson. He gets a yard, and outside of a couple of carries, Larry Johnson has not been a factor in this game. Ratliff made the stop, but in case you're wondering, the Chiefs have to get it to around the 35-36 for Ryan Suckup, a rookie, to have a legitimate chance at a game-winning field goal. They're in midfield facing third and nine. Castle in trouble. Going backward, throws high, and it's incomplete. Keith Brooking out there to make the play. Jamal Charles, the intended receiver, and what a good job by the Dallas defense. With that drive starting just shy of midfield, it went nowhere for Kansas City. Well, that was a tough position for this Dallas defense to be put in, giving the ball to Kansas City at midfield. And being expected then to not give up 20 yards of offense because that puts them right into field goal range. And they do to Kansas City what Kansas City's defense did to Dallas. Brooking with a game high 11 tackles and his first sack since 2007. Here's Creighton. Fair catch made at the 21 yard line, a 29 yard punt. Not very good from Colquitt. And a little breathing room for Tony Romo in this Dallas offense, which yardage wise has been pretty good. 409 total yards, but only 20 points. Now, as you can see, they've, they've put to shard choice in the game. Two tight ends, the only receiver, Miles Austin and Choice. Bounces it to the edge to Shard Choice. Every time he's touched it today, he's made a difference. Page made the stop after a 24-yard run. Well, they just don't contain it. Brandon Flowers, the corner, comes in, and you know he he's supposed to spill it back inside, but he gets caught, and it gives the corner then to Shard Choice. Choice averaging 12 and a half yards per carry gets it again and picks his way up just shy of midfield picks up five Choice has a 36 yard touchdown run in this game and now he's working on this Kansas City defense here in overtime and outside of fatigue he doesn't look like he should come out of this game in favor of Barber. Yeah, and I don't think he's had enough carries to get fatigued today. Second and five. Three tight ends in the game for Dallas. The Cowboys throw it. Penalty flag on the play. Choice comes up just shy of first down yard. It just looks like a hold against Dallas. Yeah, it's going to be called on Flozell Adams at, at left tackle against Tom Bahali. Holding. Offense number 76. Ten yard penalty. Repeat second down. And he just tackles him. I mean, he's a little late getting out of his stance, and you, know, you can imagine why when he's been called for some false starts and. You know, you got to get out of your stance if you're going to be able to block Tom Bahali because he's so quick anticipating the count and then coming off the ball. And Flozell Adams is caught in a, a little bit of a catch 22 then. And which is the more veteran team? Dallas, 13 penalties to Kansas City, seven. Second and 15. Oh, 
Romo throws and completes to Austin. What a day. No flags on the field. He can fly on home. Kansas City team they will stay winless Jason Garrett with a hug for Miles Austin and Miles Austin was the star of this throwback day in Kansas City well we've seen that a couple times in this game and Leggett was there in coverage and you know Austin does a good job of coming back and making the catch and he just breaks the tackle they're unable to get him to the ground and then once he gets out of that tackle you see the speed that he has and we've seen it throughout the day today and you're right Joe I mean what a day Miles Austin had in a game that was needed and with Roy Williams back at home and a team that was in desperate need of a win first NFL start 10 catches and a Cowboy record Troy 250 yards receiving and two touchdowns including the game winner in overtime and the Cowboys squeak out of Kansas City three and two. Let's go down to Pam Oliver. Well, first of all, the entire team came and swarmed you, jumped all over you. First of all, how you? Yeah, that was my boy. What a day for you. Yeah, it was big. It was big. Uh, I want to thank Coach. I want to thank God, first off, for, uh, you know, opening my eyes, you know, and, and, uh, and putting things in perspective for me. But, uh, you know, I'm just, I'm just, I fought as hard as I could out here. We all did. And uh, it was great. What, what perspective were you talking about? Uh, you know, just my life, man. Just getting things together, working harder, you know, just trying to do things the right way. And uh, that's what I'm trying to do from here on out. So, yeah, man, I'm excited. T today, we saw you and Tony Romo completely on the same page. Yeah. Last week, not so much. So yeah. what happened in those seven days? You know, a lot of work, a lot of work during the week, not only with me, but the other receivers and our whole team. You know, we got a, we got a great team. And I'm just, I'm happy as, as can be right now. You, you deserve it. Thanks so much. Appreciate that. Let's go back to Joe. All right, Pam, thank you. 250 yards receiving for Miles Austin. The hero of the day for Dallas. They're three and two, 26-20 in overtime. A lot more to come from Kansas City after the break.